Hello everyone, FudgeNX here. Welcome back to Feed the Beast Beyond modded A through Z. We're going to look at every single mod in the Feed the Beast Beyond pack and make you guys experts. Today we're looking at Refined Storage. Uh, the mod's been around a little while, um, but it was really created, I believe, as an answer to uh, Planet Energistics 2, <laughs> where it got a lot more difficult with all the channels and all that kind of stuff. So refined storage, I think, meant to go back to the the advanced the applied energistics of the good old days. You know, when it was first created, and everybody used it. It was simple. <laughs> it was great. And uh, yeah, it's a great little mod. It adds a little bit of things that weren't in the original AE, and so, you know, borrows some stuff from AE too, and has some stuff of its own. To get into the mod, you're going to need some redstone, some iron, some gold, and some diamonds, some nether quartz as well. And then some silicon. Now you get silicon two ways. There's one that comes with the mod, and that's going to become smelting nether quartz. Or you can get the Ender IO silicon, which is ore dictionary. And that comes from sag or, uh, you know, basically refining your sand, your clay, or your redstone ore to get some silicon. Once you all have all that, you're ready to go. You want to craft a controller. And it's crafted like this. You're going to see a lot of the mod uses quartz enriched iron. That's really easy to make, just iron with another quartz. You get four quartz enriched iron. You're going to need a ton of it. <laughs> but make that controller, make the machine casing, and you're good to go. Place it down in the world somewhere in your base. And you need to give it power for it to work. I've placed it next to a creative capacitor bank. Yay! You can place it next to any kind of uh, power system or, you know, use conduits, pipes, whatever you, whatever way you can get power into this system. Now, it's going to use RS per tick, and that is one-to-one -one with RF. And there's other systems that it works with. It translates to like four RS per one EU and other things, but you just need to give it any kind of power um, for modern Minecraft, and it'll convert it to RS per tick. You can see it stores 32,000 internally and tells you how much it's using. Right now, none. Next thing, you're going to want to make a solder. Solder is... Quartz, iron, uh, quartz enriched iron and sticky pistons. This is basically your crafting block for everything out, or a lot of the other stuff in the in the mod. And you can see it's got three slots on the left, one slot on the right, very similar to applied logistics. Uh, you can take things like, well, let's make a few of them actually. And you can see each one of these that we put down needs to be adjacent to the controller, or you can actually use cable if you want to do that instead. And uh, that's going to take. Four 3 RS a tick per solderer, so now we're using 12 RS a tick total. The cables don't use any. Um, so, and that's just when they're attached. That's not when they're being used. Whether they're, they're being used or attached, they're always the same amount of RS per tick. All right. Um, so again, we can put some, uh, some iron in there. We can put some gold in there. We can put a diamond in there. And we can put some silicon in there. That's the four basic recipes that you're going to have for these solders. And you're going to see we're going to get a printed basic processor. That was for our iron. Uh, the printed improved processor for our gold. Printed advanced processor for our diamonds. And the printed silicon for your silicon. Cool. But you can take these a little step further. If you take the printed silicon, some redstone. Let's actually get a bunch of these. And your printed basic processor. That makes something. Same thing with, uh, oops, hey, give me some of that redstone back. Uh, with your, uh, your printed improved and your printed advanced. All right, and then once you get these, the basic processor has one more craft, but it's just normal crafting, where you combine it with either a glowstone dust or a nether quartz to get the construction core and destruction core. Otherwise, you get the other processors, and you're good to start making everything in the mod at that point, once you have a bunch of those. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these solders. They just take up space. Um, if you would like to have a bunch of solders, but you don't want them constantly taking up power, use the relay. The relay responds to a redstone signal, and will basically turn the network on or off things that are connected to it. So here we have a solderer. Two solders right now are taking up seven hours per tick, one for the relay, three each for the solders. Turn that off. Now we're taking up none. It's as if they don't even exist. It's just disconnecting the that part of the network. So I'd recommend that doing that with your ever your solder system, since that's always crafting, or I mean that's always sucking power even when you're not crafting. Um, 
You can also get the wrench for this mod. It's pretty easy. It's a bunch of quartz iron with a basic processor. It has two modes. The first one is rotation. So if I get a block that actually can be rotated, let me just throw one of these down. You can see we can uh, control left, no, control left click in the air to switch modes. It's now in rotation mode, shift click, shift, no. Control right click to switch modes, shift right click to actually perform the action. So you can see I can rotate it. And then if I switch to the other mode, which is configuration, that's basically how you copy um, settings and paste to other blocks. So that's your wrench. Uh, okay, so let's get into the mod. We've got the solder. We've got uh, your controller. Just load up the defaults here again. Now we actually need to focus on the storage aspect of this game, of this mod. So we can store things in blocks. That's awesome. We've got a 1,000 storage block, a 4,000, 16K, and 64K. And that is number of items. And that doesn't matter if they stack or not. Normally in a chest, if you have a bunch of items that don't stack, you're limiting how much can go in the chest, right? Normally, you know, it's max would be 64 times the number of slots. For every slot you fill up with something that doesn't stack, you're reducing. This does not care about that. It's just 1,000 items in this block. Good to go. So we'll put it down. I'm going to get rid of this one, actually, and let's just put in a cable here. And it says I've got 1,000 storage, but how do I put things in? <laughs> well, uh, you can you could probably pipe them in. Let's, let, I, actually, I don't even know how that works. Let's get a, um, a hopper here. Just a vanilla hopper. Put it there. Does that work? We put redstone in there? No, didn't think so. <laughs> so that's not how. How are we going to put mop stuff into this? Well, we need a grid. The basic grid is like that. Construction core, improved crossers, destruction core. And that you're just going to put anywhere on your network. And you're going to allow it to see what is in the storage of refined storage. So now, if we... <laughs> one over there. If we start putting some redstone, iron, glowstone, gold, silicon in there. You can see they all went in there and they totaled up and put here. They took up 320 units of this 1,000 in their 1K storage block. The other ones function exactly the same, just with larger inventories. And you'll notice on this, it has a few things you can set. Um, here is what you're filtering. So if we had two of these, and we said, let's get everything back out. Um, let's say iron and gold can go in this one. And let's say diamonds and redstone can go in this one. And we'll go ahead and throw those all in there. You can see this one now is 128. That one has 128. If we try to put our silicon in there, it will not go because there's it's black, basically blacklisted because these are the only things that can go in there, whitelist. All right. Um, but if we do put silicon in there, or if we just blacklist this stuff, then we can put silicon in there. There we go. And now gold and iron won't go in there. Uh, the other things we have, we can um, only work with a redstone signal, which basically means we can turn this block on and off with a redstone signal, whether it stores items. Usually you're going to say ignore. I don't really know a use case where you'd want to control with the redstone signal. Um, then you've got all your your fuzzy filtering. So if I want to say, you know, all iron ore, no matter what mod it comes from, I could compare the NPT or something like that, or dictionary, I mean. If you want to compare damage values, so only like um, completed, uh, completely healed pickaxes go in here or something, you could do that. Um, but yeah, you've got the damage value, MBT value, or dictionary value, and then you've got the option to void excess items. So as soon as we hit this 1,000 limit, anything else that goes into this chest will just be voided. Be very careful with that. <laughs> and then you've got access type. Now right now it's set to insert and extract. If I set to insert only, I can put items in. Oops, I'm going to change this back to whitelist. But I can't take them out. <laughs> If I change this to extract only, I can take them out, but I can't put them in. All right. So whatever, if you find a use case for that. Last thing is priority. Normally everything's set to zero. If you make it higher, that makes it higher priority. Things will want to go in there. If you make it lower, negative, uh, things will not want to go there. They'll find a higher priority first. Um, so if we put this at 10, don't forget to hit set. If you just hit 10 and hit escape, it'll just be like you're canceling it. So hit 
plus whatever, set it, and now it'll actually save it. And now this is more likely to store it in here. So I have iron in both, but the iron is going to go to this one first. It's higher priority. All right. That is your storage blocks. Now they're also fluid storage blocks and they act very similar. So now we got fluid, fluid storage blocks here. They store 64 buckets, 64,000 millibuckets in here. You've got the same filtering, basically, priority system filters. Um, but to do that, you need a buckets of stuff, basically. So let's get a bucket of water and lava. If I um, put this here, I can say only water goes in there, only lava goes in there. Now when I come to here, I can put, oh wait, I can't. I can't put buckets in there. Amazing. Let me clear these. <laughs> I can put buckets in there, but they just go in as buckets. That's, that's not what I want. There's nothing in here. What I need to do is I need to get a different kind of a grid. This grid is for items. There's another grid for um, fluids. So we'll put that right there. And now you can see when I shift click a water bucket, the bucket stays in my inventory, but the liquid goes in there. Same thing with the lava. All right, I can see if we use 1,000 there, 1,000 there, pretty cool. We got our fluid grids. If I want to extract, I need a bucket inventory. Right now I don't, and if I have water, nothing comes out. But if I have a bucket in here, it will fill my bucket up for me. Cool. Same thing with the lava. Fills it up, put it back in. All right, that is that. Um, let's see, if I have just a bucket in here, can I pull this out? Yes, I can. All right, so we'll use the buckets from in here if you have them, which is great. Cool, so we can have this huge storage system with all these uh, storage blocks. Your other option for storage um, is with disk drives. Now, why would you use a disk drive over a block? Because the crafting recipe takes the storage part, basic processor, machine casing, whereas the... 1K storage disk takes the storage part and just about pretty much the same amount of stuff, really, if you think about it. So it's not like this is that much cheaper. So why would you use it? Uh, one reason would be if, uh, if space was an option, because with the storage drive, I can put eight of these disks into one drive. And so now I hold 8,000 in a single block, or if I use the 64 and <laughs> 64 times eight in there. So that might be a reason to use the disk, but another reason is they're portable. Uh, these, if you break them, um, I guess you can transfer them, but these are a lot easier just to say, okay, I've got, I am want to take this one out, go over to my other base and put it in there or something, or I can send it on its journey <laughs> to some other place. So portability and size are kind of the reason you want to use a disk drive. Um, but this takes uh, 1,000, or holds 1,000 here. Um, you have the same set of filtering, priority, all that kind of stuff. All right, so we can now throw, let's let's make this a higher priority, like higher priority 10. And throw some stuff in here. You can see that it should now have started filling up the storage disks. If I did not save it, no I did. Why did you go in there? What's your priority? Oh, you have a priority 10 too, okay. Sit there. <laughs> Let's get everything out and put it back in. And now, oops, are we taking up the drive? Yes, now we are going into this first drive, okay? Um, one thing about drives is they tend to get fragmented. <laughs> like right now, let's see, I've got 64 on that one. And let's put a little bit, oops, I keep using the liquid grid. Let's put some there, some of you, some of you, some of you on that one. And let's do one more. There we go. So now we've got three disks, each with a little bit of stuff on them. And I'd like to have them all with in one disk. Or maybe I'm upgrading now to a 4K storage and I want to put everything on the 4K. What you want to do is take these out of your hard disk drive, put the new one in there in the top left slot, that's where it's in a default to, and use your disk manipulator lock. There it is. Put that down somewhere attached to your network. And in here, it's going to have input slots and, out and output. You can only really put them in the end. And you can see as I always throw this one, it's going to start sucking stuff out of it and put it back in the network based on priority. Well, this is the highest priority, so it's going to start filling this 4K storage disk with what was on here. 
So I could do the same thing with my other two that have a little bit, bit on them. And eventually all of this stuff will be on that single disc. As long as it can hold it, then it would move to this one, obviously. So that's, that's I always usually run the disc manipulator whenever I see that there's chunks on each one and I, I don't know. It's, it's not as big of a deal. It was a bigger deal in AE because stacks took up less storage than items. Um, different items. Like more of a single item took up less storage than more of different items. So you wanted them all on the same disc. Not so in refined storage, so this is not as much needed. More when you want to consolidate discs. All right, so let's get back that past that. Let's keep going. Um, we've got the same thing. We can put fluid disc in here as well. So we put like two 512 fluid discs in there and that would store all our fluid. Cool. Um, and let's move next, I think to the cabling. So this is how it interacts with other mods or other systems in the, in the Minecraft world. We've got an importer and an exporter. Let's also get a chest just for demonstrations. If I want to export something out of my network, that's how you think of it, is what do I want to do to my network? I want to export out of it, all right? I want to put stuff in the chest. Export to the chest, I put an export down. Doesn't do anything by default, I need to tell it what I want to export. I want to export iron. There's no way for me to control how much iron comes out, it's just gonna start exporting iron until it runs out. There are ways with uh, relays and detectors and that kind of stuff to stop it, but base, you know, your normal exporter is just going to export whatever you say here into wherever you want. This is very common to use in ore processing. You can say export all of my iron ore into a furnace um, and that kind of thing. Now if I want to bring stuff back in, let's say I have a quarry and I want to bring stuff into my network, then I use the importer. And that's going to start just sucking up whatever is in that inventory back into my system. I can filter, so I say I only want gold. It's going to stop doing the iron. All right. I can also say I want to import fluids. Well, you're not a fluid, so it's not going to import anything. Um, but if I put a fluid in here, as long as I have a place to store it, which I should, maybe. Are you going to bring in fluids? Oh, I need to do this. Type fluids. No, I guess I can't do that. <laughs> this has to be a tank. I'm thinking of another block we'll get to in just a minute. I need to have an actual tank of water for this to suck it in. There we go. So now it's going to start sucking in whatever water I put in there. The exporter works the same way. I can export um, into a tank. Oops, I better say fluids. There we go. And now it's going to start filling it up. All right. Um, so that covers exporter, importer. You've got also the external storage. And this is when you interact, interact with an inventory but not actually move anything in or out. So let me need a chest again as I just got rid of it. And uh, you, so let's say you have a chest here and you want to be able to access the stuff from your refined storage network, but you want to leave the stuff in the chest. Use the external storage. Uh, I can get rid of all of this storage now. Just connect this cable. All right, and I don't have any storage now in my refined storage system, but I can still put stuff in. Well, where is it going? It's going into the chest. It's going to store it in there. So that's a really cool way to store things. Now where this external storage really shines is when you use drawer controllers. Because then you can say external storage into a drawer controller. Well that drawer controller can then access all of your network of drawers and you can have like a gigantic storage system <laughs> built up with the drawers. And that you can also see in the grid. All right. Let's go back to the defaults here. Um, then you've got the constructor and the deconstructor. Now if I have a block of something in the world, like a diamond block maybe, yeah, sounds good. And let's say I want to, um, let's say some mod like turn stone into an ore and I want to bring it into my mod. Well the destructor breaks bl blocks, maybe. Come on. Oh, I need, st I need some kind of storage. <laughs> I've, I removed all my storage. All right, so it breaks it puts the diamond in there. So it's actually gonna act as if it broke the block. All right. So if I have a ton of things that need to be broken, I could combine that 
with the constructor. All right, now I'm gonna just turn this off really quick. So only with it work with the redstone signal, I can put that down. And let's put the constructor here and connect it with a cable. And we'll tell the constructor what we want to put down. Well, we want to put down diamond ore. All right, now that, let's say this thing can now work again. It's gonna break and this thing will then place it if we have it in our system. There it goes, place break, place break, place break. Sweet. I'm going to go ahead and stop doing that. Um, and that's really cool and all, but what if we want more diamonds? <laughs> well, let's start looking at upgrades. Your basic upgrade container, it really doesn't do anything by itself, is quartz, um, iron, improved processor, and glass. And that is just a building block for all the other ones. You've got range upgrades, speed upgrades, interdimensional upgrades... Silk Touch, Crafting, Fortune 1, Fortune 2, and Fortune 3. Now the Silk Touch and Fortune ones apply to the Destructor. So if I want it to Silk Touch, whatever it's breaking, I can get that. This is kind of a stupid setup because it's just going to break and then place again the same thing. But there might be another use case where you want to um, break something with Silk Touch. You can see now it's just going to keep putting diamond ore back in there, all right? Uh, one that's another more usable use case with it would be to get the fortune upgrades. You don't have to have like the pre, pre previous upgrades like some mods require you to. You just craft the highest one you can can. And let's put the fortune three in there. No, nope, not in there, in there. Oh, that's the constructor. Would help if I put it in there, there we go. And now when it places this diamond ore, it's going to break it with fortune three. You can, should see we're getting like three or four diamonds every time. Cool, much better. All right, so that's good use for the destructor constructor. Um, you can use it in a lot of different ways, but that's just a very common use. Uh, well, what should we go to next? Um, there's a few other types of grids. Let's look at the crafting grid. The crafting grid is just like a normal grid, but it has a crafting window. Sweet. <laughs> so if I want to craft diamond block, here we go. Now I can craft a diamond block. And it's going to leave the items in there as long as I have them. So I can just keep clicking or shift click, that kind of thing. And I can get that to turn them back into diamonds. And there we go. So I, I usually upgrade my grid to a crafting grid almost immediately just because it's so much more useful. Uh, as far as the grid itself, we didn't really go over these items. You can turn it on and off with a redstone signal. Um, you can display um, craftables, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, you can sort ascending or descending. You can sort by quantity, name, or ID. And you can search, the search box mode is this box here. You can default it to normal, which just lets you filter. Uh, help if we have other things in there. So let's see, I want to only filter to gold. That really helps when this scroll bar is like all the way down for billions of items. You're going to want to filter. The normal auto selected means as soon as I click on this, it automatically puts my cursor there so I can just start typing. And then you've got JEI synchronize, which means whatever you type into JE or into here will automatically be placed into JEI's window as well. Then you've got JE synchronize or auto synchronize. Auto selected, there we go, which means it automatically puts your cursor up here, which is really cool. And it clears it out every time, which is kind of nice. Um, but that's your different modes. All right. So that covers all the storage blocks, the relay. Now we've got these things called an interface that should exist for items and fluids. This is another way to really just interact with, uh, with your world. So if I put the interface here, I can say, uh, it, it acts as an importer and an exporter. So if I put items in the top slot, it's just going to bring them into my network pretty slowly. <laughs> if I put things in the middle slot, it's going to say, I want you to keep this amount of silica, whatever I put here, in this output chest. All right. If I can left click to go down, right click to go up, shift click to clear. All right. So we can say, I want to keep four silicon and one gold in this thing. Oh, 64 gold, whatever. <laughs> so now this could be used in another mod where we could suck it out or, or that kind of thing. Um, there's no mode like in Applied Energistics which would automatically export stuff from the interface to another location. Um, you would need to like put in like a conduit or something to take them out or put them in. 
All right, so the, inter the interface is used quite a bit um, in different integrations with other, other mods. Don't really need it though here. Let's just put the crafting grid. Where are you? We'll just replace our normal grid. Okay. Then let's talk about the rest of the upgrades. Uh, your range upgrade we're not going to use for right now. Speed upgrade affects processing as far as moving in items in and out. So it also affects your solderer. So if we have a solder, we can put in up to four speed upgrades. And if you guys remember how slow it was going before, now let's put a gold in there and look how much faster it is. However, it takes up a lot more power. <laughs> 11 RS instead of three. So it's two per speed upgrade. If you want it even faster, it's not gonna work with the solder, but you can combine four speed upgrades and some sugar to get a stack upgrade. Um, Let's get one of these two. Now that's gonna work really well for importers and exporters. So let's get a chest again. And let's import something here. Okay, and we'll put our iron in there and look how slow this is. Eh, kinda slow, kinda fast. What do we put as speed upgrades in here? It's gonna start flying. If we put a stack upgrade in there, it's gonna grab the entire stack of iron in one one shot. <laughs> so yeah, those are really nice. Again, they're gonna increase your power cost to use them. So you might wanna have this past a relay so you can turn it on and off. Let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, so I can have something that says when there's items in this chest, output a redstone signal into this guy and start importing. When this is empty, turn this off and then you wouldn't be wasting power. That's a great way to do a quarry so that you say only only import when there's items in the chest, that kind of thing. I'll leave you guys to set up that redstone circuit. <laughs> it's not that bad, you put a comparator here, redstone, redstone, done. Um, what else? Let's go, well, we cover, yeah, we covered all the ones we can right now. Let's go into auto crafting, all right? So we've got this thing called patterns. This is the same as applied logistics crafter and a processing pattern encoder plus we've got a pattern grid now if we want to just create normal patterns this is a crafting operation that goes in a, in a craft in a grid you put the crafting grid down and you want to say how do you build this well let's just say we want to build a block of iron i don't know now let's say we want to build a uh, iron iron bars you can do that take a pattern here and create the pattern and you can see now it's a pattern 16 iron bars okay if I shift click, it says the input and the output, and I can bring it out of there. Now, how do I actually use it to craft? Well, I need the crafter block connected to my inventory, or to my network, let's put that right there. It can go in different directions. I think it looks better when it's facing up. And we'll stick that pattern right in there. Now, if we look in our normal grid, our crafting grid, you can see we can craft iron bars. Click on that, how many do we want? Well, we want one. Well, it doesn't know how to make one. It can only make 16, so it's gonna craft 16. It's going to say, oh, I want to craft one iron bar. I need six iron. They're all available. Hit start. And you can see it crafted it. Now, what if I want to craft too many? It says we need 96 iron bars. Okay, I guess we can craft that many. Uh, let's see, we want a ton. There we go. Now it says you're missing 190. You only have 122. So you'll get a nice little warning if you don't have enough blocks to craft with. Cool. Well, that, it doesn't end there, right? What if we want to craft things and they don't craft in a normal crafting bench? Let's say we want to craft something from Ender.io, like Energetic Alloy. All right, now we can have one of those. And the recipe for that is an alloy smelter with redstone, glowstone, and gold. Well, I'll need some glowstone. I've already got the redstone and gold, so let's put those all but one in there. That's ready to go. Now I'm gonna to need to put down the processing pattern encoder. You can't do it in here because it actually has to be a valid crafting pattern to make this work. So you have to put this guy down. And now you're gonna, you can craft, and you can basically give it any recipe. You can say one redstone equals an iron bar. And it's like, okay, sure. <laughs> it believes you, whatever you say. 
But what I want to sell it is a redstone, a glowstone, and a gold. It's shapeless, doesn't matter. Just you need the right proportions in here. If you click in it like that, it's going to do 64, so don't do that. And I need to tell it what, that, what this creates, energetic alloy. All right, and I need to get a pattern. And we'll put the pattern there and create it. There we go. And it says uh, redstone, gold, and glowstone makes energetic alley, just like I want, right? Now, what does that need to go in? That needs to go in an alley furnace. Uh, let's give it a capacitor as well, just so it works a little bit faster. And let's put it over here by our oops, infinite power. There we go. So now we need to say... Okay, you guys, you need to put that in here. Now, how do I do that? I need to get a crafter. And I need to place it, but I need to aim it at where I want to actually craft with. And so that's where your uh, wrench really shines, is you can put it on rotation mode. And rotate it like that. And that's the way it aims, is where the little blue kind of arrow points. <laughs> it's pointing down. So that means if I tell this thing to craft something, it's going to put the items in this uh, slot. So we'll go ahead and say craft an energetic alloy right there. Come over here, say, okay, go ahead and craft, like, give me 10 of these. Start, it says you've got everything available. Start, and now it's going to put them right in there. Sweet. You can put upgrades in here so it moves them a little faster. Nope, nope, can't do that. You can do speed upgrades. That will put the items in here faster. Uh, but we got nothing to pull this out. This is not going to automatically pull things out. So we're going to need to use something like either an importer, which is probably the easiest. And we'll get a cable there to connect to that. Is that pulling them out? Yes, it is. And they should go back in our system. So a little two-step process. You need to have the crafting recipe created in the pattern encoder. Put it in a crafter pointing at the machine that you want to use and then have some way of pulling it back into the system and then you can automate other mods automation is the the name of the game refined storage i mean storage is nice but automation is killer all right let's get back here we've covered pretty much everything guys there is this block we haven't covered as the detector uh, it needs to be connected to somewhere on your network so we can put it like here <laughs> And what we're going to say is we can have an item here. So let's see, cobble. Sure. Let's get some cobble, a lot of it. Put a piece of cobble there and let's say 100. All right. 100 cobble. Now we have to tell it what we want it to do. We want it to detect items. We want to emit a signal when either on, above, or under. Well, let's say let's emit a signal when we're less than 100 cobble. Now, we have a redstone signal on right now because we have no cobble in the system. If we then start putting cobble in the system, 64, still on, 128, now it goes off. All right, so this is now off. It's probably better to say when we're greater than 100, do this. And then you could do something like turn a relay on or off. So now that relay is off, uh, let's see off because we gave it a redstone signal let's put a cable here and let's get a trash can this is one of the most common uses of the, the that thing there and we'll get an export oops and tell it to export cobble all right so right now it's not exporting cobble out of my system cobble is staying there but if I say this is a greater than 100 emit a redstone signal, and let's say that turns on this guy, so it only works with a redstone signal, now it's going to start exporting cobble until we get to 100, which is going to happen pretty soon. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, off, and now it's going to stop exporting cobble. We have about 100. Sometimes if you have speed upgrades, you're going to get a little bit less than that, so be careful. But now, anytime we put in more than 100 cobble, it's going to start trashing it until it gets down to 100. Obviously, you might want to do like a lot higher number, <laughs> something like that, and then it'll only work when you get super high amounts. That's a really nice way to do this kind of trash can export, um, but it does take a lot of blocks. You can see an exporter, a relay, and a detector just to 
make it work. All right, so that wraps up the detector. And really the only thing that we have left is the wireless stuff and a few things with the upgrades. So if I want to have my main storage system here, but somewhere over, let's just say here, <laughs> and let's say this is way far away, I don't want to run cable to it. I can do that. What I need to get is a transmitter, receiver, and network card. These are all take ender pearls and advanced processors, so they're not cheap. But you go ahead and take your receiver and you want to put that down first, let's say right there. Then I'm going to take my card and right click on it. And I want to make sure that these are both areas are loaded at the same time as far as chunk loading. So either chunk load your base or chunk load here, probably chunk load both. <laughs> Come back over to where your main system is, get the transmitter, put it down, connect it to your network, and put the network card inside it. Now it's going to tell us it's 14 blocks away. You know, this could be hundreds of blocks away. And now uh, it's going to send stuff over here. So we can get a grid, crafting grid maybe, and put that right there. And it's not working. <laughs> Why is it not working? I think this item doesn't take power, so it doesn't transfer power. So let's get it just a cable. There we go. So now that's lit up because it's getting power and it's transferring it over here. Sweet. Into our crafting grid. Now we can see all of our stuff way over here, even though it's hundreds and hundreds of blocks away. Not really. Uh, but you'll notice this thing tells you how many blocks. Really, that's so you know how much power you're using. The transmitter it's on its own uses 50 RS. And you can see based on the distance away, you're going to use a lot of RS. The receiver is 15 on its own. <laughs> so just this short little distance, we're using like 106 plus 15 just to transmit our network over there. So not cheap. If you go really, really far away, you're going to be spending thousands of RS. So not something you can do until you have a good, good power source. Now let's say this is in the nether. Well, that's not going to work, is it? Well, it is. Only if you get the extra dimensional, intradimensional upgrade. And you put that in there, it'll go in that slot. And now this thing is going to take 1,050, what we get here? 1,000 RS a tick um, for the network transmitter. So 1,015 total between the two of them. And that uh, will, will allow you to transfer to other dimensions. So I could be in the nether, I could be in the end, I could be in an RF tools dimension, something like a mythcraft, mythcraft dimension, anything else, that's what you need to transfer into the other dimensions. It might be easier just to build your own uh, controller in that dimension and use ender chests or something like that. All right, we have one more method of wireless, and that's this transmitter here and these three uh, wireless grids. The transmitter needs to be on a cable. It can't be on a block. It doesn't work. It doesn't even connect. So put it on a cable. There you go. looks pretty. Right click on it and it's going to say I can transmit wireless signal 16 blocks. All right. Well now I've got this wireless grid and it's been charged with RS. Um, and let's say that I want to access this uh, controller. Well I'm going to need to shift click on the controller. It lights up. Now it's good. And it says it's linked to that location, and you can see I can access all of my items 16 blocks away. So if we go outside, oh, no, <laughs> no transmitter in range. Well, we can fix that with one of those other upgrades we've seen. There's a range upgrade. And let's put, well, where did, where'd you go? Let's put f four in there. You can see our max range is 48 blocks. So if you have a big base, you might need a few of these wireless transmitters throughout your base. But now you can see we can go way far away. Uh, the wireless crafting grid works the same way except you don't shift click on the controller, you shift right click on a crafting grid itself. And then you can use that to actually craft items remotely. Uh, we didn't really cover the crafting monitor. It's not used greatly. <laughs> it basically, all it shows you is when you're auto crafting what is currently crafting in the system so you can monitor it. So I guess I could do that. Shift click on the controller. I'm just going to say, what are you what are you crafting right now? Well, I'm not crafting anything. All right, so that's pretty much all your wireless stuff. Um, your upgrades, your, your blocks, your storage, your export, import, your grids, your auto crafting. Um, do we cover every single item here? We did not cover the crafting upgrade. Let's go ahead and load back the default. What this is used for is when you have an exporter. All right. 
And let's say I want to, what did we have in our crafting patterns over here? We craft iron bars, all right? Well, let's, let's grab an iron bar. And let's say for some reason, I wanna star, store a ton of iron bars in the chest. <laughs> I don't know why I just want to, right? Well, I can put an exporter here and tell it to export iron bars. And it's gonna go that, do that and just be happy about it. Oh wait, there's no iron bars in our system. Well, that sucks, it knows how to craft them. Why isn't it exporting iron bars? Because you need to put a crafting upgrade in there. As soon as you stick the crafting upgrade in there, it's gonna start crafting iron bars. It'll craft it whenever it needs it. You can see it crafted 16 and then it started exporting a one. As soon as it runs out, craft 16 more and then export one at a time. Want it to go faster, obviously get some speed upgrades. There they are. Now this thing's gonna start flying through. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and it's gonna use all your iron. There's literally no way to stop it. So you probably want one of these guys on there to say stop after you don't have any more iron in the network or something like that. But yeah, it's gonna just craft iron bars for days. Let's get rid of it. Guys, that is it for refined storage. Um, it's not a lot of blocks. It's not that expensive. It just takes, you know, really redstone, iron, and quartz are your most, you know, common thing, plus silicon, which is sand. Um, so you can get into it really early and just use it as your storage system and your automation system. If you want to get into applied energistics, more power to you. It's just going to be a little bit more crafted and cost a little more materials, um, but you benefit for a little bit more versatility. Um, I really like the wireless stuff they've added. It's expensive power-wise, but it is really nice that you don't have to wi run wires all over the place or worry about, you know, transmitting through like ender chests, that kind of crap. Um, it's just gonna, it even works across dimensions. Guys, if you, if you like the uh, video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. If you have another mod from Feed the Beast Beyond that you'd like me to cover, please put it in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll continue to cover every mod A through Z. Catch you guys later. Bye.